Hello and welcome to Let's Learn Computing. I'm Todd Colwell. Today's tutorial is to create a collecting game with Kodu Game Lab. It's for Windows PC, the subject is computing, and it's for children aged 7 to 9. To get started and do this lesson, you'll need to make sure that you have Kodu Game Lab installed on your school network. And this is the website to download Kodu Game Lab. So the lesson concepts today is that children will be sequencing commands to get a robot named Kodu to move around the screen and collect an object. And so to do that, we'll look at how to get input from the keyboard. And also, the children will quite likely that they'll make a mistake doing some of this programming. So they'll also have to debug the algorithms that they're putting together. The easy activities today are to build some terrain and some hills and then get an object being eaten when the robot moves on top of the object. So this is the starting screen for Kodu Game Lab. First of all, they need to click on New World. Some basic movement controls to tell the children at the start are to use the wheel of the mouse to zoom in and zoom out. Then if they hold the left mouse button down and move the mouse, that moves the world from side to side. And if they hold the right button of the mouse down, then that makes the world tilt from the side view to the top view. So next is to show how to paint the terrain. So using this brush tool, and if they click here, then there, there are many different types of terrain. So they can use the left button and right button of the keyboard to select different terrain. And then once again, the left button and right button usually do opposite things in Kodu. So the left button to put ground down and the right button to delete. Also, the keyboard, if I put the left key, it makes the square much smaller, and if I put the right key, it quickly gets very big. All right, so I'm just going to paint a quick circle, because that will be enough. Then, after that, I'll use the Create Hills or Valleys tool, and I don't want it to be that big, so I'll create some hills over here. And once again, the right button, lowers the ground. And this one is for flattening. The next tool is for flattening. If they hold the left button, it flattens towards the bottom. And if they hold the right button, it flattens towards the top. This is uh, very quickly makes the ground go up, very spiky. Now I've got two different types of terrain, and I've had a bit of a go at doing the different raising and lowering options. It's time to get on to the programming. And you should encourage the children to have, let's say, 10 minutes at the start of the lesson just to use these different tools. But really, we need to get on to the programming. So to do that, go to the Objects menu, click on the screen, and the star of the game is Kodu. So we're going to have Kodu on the screen. Right, now we're going to click on the Objects menu again. And this time, when we click, we're going to place some apples randomly around the screen. Okay, so apple, select every time. The Kodu is going to walk around and collect the different apples. So to do that, we can use the wheel of the mouse to zoom up, right click on Kodu and go to program. Right, so this is the sequencing of commands. So it goes like this. When we use the keyboard and we're using the arrows of the keyboard, what do we want to do? We want to move and there's also the option of quickly. You know, you can have up to three quicklies. Move quickly. Also, new line, when we bump into an object, and that object is going to be an apple, what do we want to do? We want to eat. Okay, so when I press escape, and then when I press this play button or the escape key again, I can now see what will happen when Kodu moves around and he will eat the apples. So you can see the apple that I placed on the screen is now gone. Some further activities are to add a score to keep count of how many apples have been collected, uh, for the game to be finished when all of the objects have been collected, and to also add a starting message to explain to the player of the game what to do. All right, so firstly to add a score, need to go back, make sure that the Kodu editing menu is clicked here, and then right click on Kodu, go to program. And it goes like this. When we bump into an object, and that object is an apple, 
we want to go to game and we want to score and then we need to set a color for the score this is for multiple players so maybe one player is purple and one player is green in multiplayer games but since apples are red I'm just going to choose red and then that's all for this menu except for the points one so score red one point now let's see that if I press the escape key and you can see up the top right of the screen a little number one when that flew up to the top there to keep the score now for the second one for the game to be finished when all of the objects are collected that's a little bit more complicated you need to right click on program again when the score and then we need to go to the color of the score first so if we just go to five coder was going to say score who's five so score red and then we need to use the operator key so this is in this compare menu so the score of red equals I've put five apples on the screen so I'm going to put five just a quick note about that if you wanted to do a number such as six you have to use the five block and the one block as well but in this case it's got a block just for five when the score red equals five do we want to go to game and we want to win the game all right, so let's have a look at that. And I just skipped ahead until I've collected four apples and I'm just about to collect the fifth apple. Winner! So a nice message displayed on the screen there. Next is to add a starting message to the user of the game so they know what to do. And to do that, they need to go to this menu here, change world settings and there's this one start game with this is challenging because there are many many different things on here but if I go down to this one start the game with a description with a countdown and I select that then when I start the game it will just say the message of new world so that should prompt the children to exit that and then go to home then they need to save when they save the game they should call it what the game is about. Collect the apples and then in the description there are five apples to collect. And when I click save and then go back to the start of the game, collect the apples, there are five apples to collect, and then press enter, we get a nice countdown as well to start the game. So then the game's looking more complete. Challenge activities are to change some of the world settings. So I'll just show you two, glass walls and sky, none of which are too challenging, but it's just that the menu is quite complicated for that part of the program. And also to add extra characters which run around by themselves. So the world settings, to do that, we need to click over to the far right and change the world settings. By default, glass walls is on. That means that when you're running around on the screen playing the game and you hit the side of the world, it will just bounce off. But if you turn it off, the robot will fall down into the sky. The other one, if I use the down arrow on the keyboard, is to go to the sky. And the default is sky 11. So if you want to make it darker and the lighting effects as well. Now for the extra characters, click on the objects menu. Click on the ground where you want to place one of the objects. And this time I'm going to go to Rover. But just quickly I'll show you that there are actually many different types of robots and features in this program. Clouds, drums, sticks, fish for underwater, castles, coins, different objects as well, hearts, stars, balls, many different things. But Rover will do for now. Now I need to right click on Rover. But before I do, if you have the mouse on top of the robot, and you use the left and right arrow keys. That's how you change the colors. So uh, sometimes I've noticed that the children move the mouse up to the top here to try to change the colors, and then it goes away. So it can be very frustrating if they don't know that. So right click, click on program. Now this one needs to run around by itself. So when, instead of the keyboard and use the arrow keys, we need to go to here, to more. And then we go to always. Now, always, what do we want to do? We want to always move. Now, that doesn't tell how the robot should move, so we need to always 
move and I like this one wander which just means move anywhere and you can also go to quickly or slowly or and up to uh, three different quicklies now it's up to the children they should use the skills from program Kodu if they want to do different things so you can say when you see Kodu you can say a message uh, when you bump into Kodu um, there's also combat things as well so you can get the program to shoot a missile or Kodu can shoot a missile there's many different things that are possible but that should be enough for getting the children started on an activity where the robot moves itself all right so let's have a look at the robot moving by itself and then we press enter for our countdown and look at the finished game the robot's moving around quickly and he fell off because I put the glass walls off so I might want to go back and decide that actually the glass wall should go on alright so the children will love doing this and I hope that you enjoy using it too To request a tutorial or to download a copy of the slides using this tutorial, visit letslearncomputing.com. I'm Todd Colwell. Thanks for listening.